Today we're gonna to be talking about why are people buying the Glock 19 in 2024? If you guys appreciate this video or you learned something, we'd appreciate a like and subscribe. It really goes a long way for our channel. The Glock 19 has been around for about 36 years and there's a pretty good reason why. This gun's a staple for reliability and Glock has done multiple generations. They are on Gen 5 now. Everything Glock has done over the past 36 years has been through the lens of reliability. That's been their number one goal and it's definitely been noticeable on the changes they've made over the generations. If you're an advocate for aftermarket accessories, there probably isn't a gun that has more aftermarket support for a firearm. There are a lot of companies making products for the Glock series of handguns. However, they're primarily bolt-ons or permanent additions to your handgun. You'll see with the SIG P320, there's a lot more customization that you can do with the handgun. Whereas the Glock just has a lot more companies backing it. So there's a lot, there's a larger variety of products you can buy for these. Which brings us to our Gen 5 Glock 19. Up top, we have our Holosun 508T and we're running the standard MOS plate on here. They've done better with this on Gen 5. I have a Gen 4 that has a thinner plate that was just not nearly as good. This one still wanted to bow a little bit when I installed it, so it's not a perfect system. If it were me, I'd probably buy the CH Precision optic plate like we have on this Glock 45. However, we wanted to give the new optic plate a try. With only a few hundred rounds on this gun, we haven't seen anything weird happen yet, but we'll keep you guys updated if anything weird does happen. On here, we're running the standard Glock sights. I personally don't like running backup suppressor height sights. I trust my optics enough that I don't feel like I need those. One of the things we decided to leave standard on here is the slide lock slide release. One thing you're gonna notice is the cog work slide release helps a lot it's going to be extended and get it up out of the way a lot of times when people do reloads they reload they don't get slide lock because their thumb sat on the slide release and then they have to rack it to get back in the game i will say that helps a lot that slide release helps a lot we didn't run into too many issues today when filming that's one of the first things i do like to upgrade when i'm adding parts to my glock 19. one thing that has came a long way with the generations of glock is gonna be the mag release. This mag release is a lot better than Gen 3. The biggest jump was from Gen 3 to Gen 4, and I believe Gen 5 uses the same mag release as Gen 4. It's not great, but it's not bad. It's definitely better than a lot of competition out there. And I would say it's almost the standard for mag releases. It's got a nice large button. You don't have to press it in all the way to get the mag to release. The spring isn't too hard. Moving our way forward to the trigger. This trigger is very polarizing for a lot of people. I like it a lot. The take up isn't too long. The brake is a rolling brake. Um, but it's very smooth and short, so it doesn't feel like it's taking forever to pull the trigger. And the reset is very tactile and short. If you give me a stock lock trigger, I'm going to be happy. My only complaint is going to be the little safety. It protrudes a little bit and it's kind of annoying. However, the more I've shot it and I've compared it to other handguns, one thing I have noticed is when I'm shooting really fast or my fingers are cold or wet, this kind of little protrusion helps keep my finger on the trigger. One thing I have found with some handguns that have really bad length of pull is my finger wants to slide off and slide down the trigger. This little ledge here actually stops that from happening. And it's kind of a good index point for your finger. If you're a newer shooter, you can get used to placing your finger on the trigger in the proper spot every time. As somebody who has tested a lot of handguns and a lot of triggers, I think this little finger safety is annoying, but I think it has its place, especially for new shooters. This is a custom rail. It's proprietary Glock. It's just not a standard 1913. So keep that in mind if you're a new shooter and you are looking for a weapon light, almost every weapon light will work on this. They come with a little Glock insert. So moving our way down the grip, this is where you see a lot of people very polarized. Some people hate it, some people love it. I kind of fall in the middle. The frame on the Glock is pretty thick and pretty wide and they come with back straps to make it even wider. However, I've always found that an original Glock is still pretty thick. If you hold a Smith & Wesson or a P320, it's gonna feel completely different than this. This is kind of its own proprietary two by four, if you will. It's a very big grip, but there's a reason for that. The more surface area you have, the more you're gonna be able to get a grip on the handgun. And this is like the perfect middle ground where it's not too big that you can't get a full grip on the handgun. However, it's big enough that it's going to help you with recoil. And I feel like Glock's done a lot of things here to help you with recoil with this low bore axis and this aggressive grip angle. This angle is gonna be different than what most handguns are and different than what you're used to if you've never shot a Glock. This isn't your standard 1911 grip angle. It's a little more aggressive. And the reason they did that is to help you further fight recoil. If you look at how you grip this handgun, there's a little bit of science to it. And all they're doing is they're trying to get it so that it's putting more pressure in your hand in the right places. And it's gonna naturally make it feel like a softer shooting handgun because the grip angle is so aggressive. And one thing I feel like they've done almost perfectly is the grip texture. A lot of people complain about this, but I actually like this grip texture a lot. It's kind of the perfect medium between aggressive and not so aggressive that it's gonna hurt your skin if you have this rubbing up against your belly, but it's aggressive enough that it's gonna actually do its job when you're shooting it. I will say this grip texture is not as good as the Walther PDP, but it's also better than a lot of guns out there. 
And this is what kind of one of those subjects where you just have to go feel the gun in person. You can't take my word for it or anybody on YouTube's word for it. You need to see if you like it in person, get it in your hands, dry fire it, see if it's something that's actually going to make a difference for you or not. Maybe you can go with a less aggressive grip texture and still really like it. But for me, I think this is like a perfect middle ground. There's guns that are better, there's guns that are worse, but that's kind of what this gun embodies is it's like a nice middle ground. It's almost a standard for pistols in the industry. I've not always been a fan of Glock's grip texture. That's why I actually got it stippled. Gen 4 was a little different. I had them remove the finger groove and do a larger underbite. They also added some stippling here where your support hand rides. I wish Glock would do this standard and add some grip texture or some stippling. I just feel like it's kind of silly they haven't done that yet. And maybe that's something we'll see on generation six. And if you're not a fan of the current Glock grip texture, you can always get it stippled. It's relatively inexpensive and it's gonna make a difference if you like that more aggressive style. One thing to keep in mind though is you are permanently modifying that frame. So make sure you go with a trusted company to get it stippled. Glocks have their serial number embedded in the frame and this is something you can't easily change out like you could with a SIG P320 or any other FCU firearm. Now down to the final part of this gun is going to be the magwell. Glock did a good job and a bad job with this. They have this big, large groove in here, and I understand its purpose is to help you strip the mag out if you have to, if the mag is jammed in here. It's definitely better than the groove they had in the front here on some of the early Gen 5s, I believe. However, companies have made little wedges to put in here to get rid of this, and I think that helps a lot with reloads. You are going to find with how thick this frame is, they were able to put a very nice mag well in here. I don't know why there's this little lip on here. That's kind of weird, but Reloadings are gonna be a lot easier with this gun than a lot of other handguns on the market, simply because the magwell is so aggressive. So I can commend Glock for doing that. However, it still could be better. So we are working on a magwell for the Gen 5 Glock 19. So stay tuned for that. That should be coming here pretty soon. One thing Glock finally did was add front slide serrations. People have been asking for this for a really long time. I don't know why they just now got around to doing it, but it is really nice nevertheless. You don't have to get your slide cut. One thing Glock also did was add these very large radiuses on the front, supposedly to help with holsters. I actually think it made the front of the gun look less blocky. So I'm really glad they added the radius on the front and the slide serrations to this slide. Makes the gun look cooler and have a little more functionality. For those of you that are fans of the channel or Harrington Arms are probably wondering why we don't have a comp on here. Well, we wanted to do some testing with a non-comp 19 for say comped 19. This is technically a Glock 45 slide. We just took it off and threw it on the 19 frame. It's basically the same exact thing. We're actually running the exact same optic. We just did a simple build drill to compare the comped gun versus the non-comped gun. The non-comped Glock 19, we had our first build drill was a 149. Our second was a 159. And on the comped Glock 45 slide, which again is the exact same size as a Glock 19 slide, we got a 144 and a 136. I feel like it was a pretty fair estimate to how a comp purely performs and I was focusing on speed. I was not necessarily focusing on hits. I still wanted to get a center hit. However, as soon as my dot came back to the center of the target, I fired the next round. You can see the comped gun was about a half a second to a second faster than the non-comped. If you were to put more emphasis on accuracy and you were trying to get that dot perfectly back on target, I feel like the number would be even more dramatic. And the reason for that is, is it's allowing you to get back on target faster and allowing you to get a better sight picture faster. If you shot around and had less muzzle flip, your dot's going to return back to the target faster and you're going to have more time to make the decision to pull the trigger again. This is definitely not the most scientific study you could do, but it allows you to see the benefits of a compensator and you'd only further see more benefits when you bring in the accuracy aspect more. However, talking about compensators, there's an elephant in the room. You'll see a lot of compensators on the market that just aren't reliable. They can't run 115 grain. They can't run 124 grain. All of our comps are held to the standard that they need to be able to run 115 grain ammunition. And on a broken in gun, you're gonna have absolutely no issues doing that. One of the other downsides with compensators is you're gonna add a lot of length. So if you're not running a weapon light, you're really gonna notice that you have a larger handgun. However, if you're running a weapon light, you'll see here it's pretty much flush with most weapon lights. So it's not gonna be as big of a deal. You're gonna to wanna to keep in mind that you're gonna need a holster that can adjust for this. So if you're a shooter and you don't have a compensator and you're looking to pick one up, note that you may have to get a different holster to allow a compensator to fit in there. Typically most open front holsters will work with this absolutely no problem at all. And if you're somebody that shoots a lot, a compensator with the muzzle being out past the weapon light is gonna keep this light face a lot cleaner. I cleaned this one during and after the rain session today and it was already getting absolutely disgusting with carbon buildup from the muzzle. So that's just kind of a side benefit of a compensator. Last week we actually had a blemish shell and stock some blemish compensators. So if you're new to compensators and you want to pick one up pretty cheap, go check it out at harringtonarms.com. So who's the Glock 19 for? It's pretty simple. It's for pretty much everybody. It is a very nice middle ground between a lot of different striker fired handguns. It's very versatile. 
It's a small enough length, it can be a carry gun. It's large enough, it still is a very good competition gun. And a lot of people do trust this with their life as a duty gun or a nightstand gun. So really it's just kind of the do-all handgun. And it has been for a long time. A lot of police and military run this gun because it's just proven, it's the right size, it's the right capacity. And again, it's just kind of one of the standard striker fired guns in the market. We've actually done a few videos on guns that are very similar, you can check out right here. Guns like the Smith & Wesson MMP9 or the SIG P320. All of these guns have their pros and cons. This gun is kind of the benchmark or the bar that a lot of companies set and they try to beat. And ultimately, I think there's a lot of room there to beat it. There are guns that have better grip texture, better ergonomics, better slide serrations. However, most of the time when somebody asks me what's a great beginner gun, I end up telling them Glock 19. I think it's a very good standard for your first handgun and you really can't go wrong. So if you wanna check out a gun that is similar but has a little more unique features, you can check out our video on the Smith & Wesson MP9. There's a lot of unique things to that handgun that makes it different enough. I think it's worth checking out. If you guys like this video, we'd appreciate a like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.